We're going to go over what colors you need for simulated process screen printing, coming up. Welcome back. Let's head over to our ink station and I'll go over the colors that you need for simulated process printing with action steps. Here are every single one of the colors that I generally use for simulated process printing. Really, there's only one color that is a Pantone color that I do use and I'll leave a link down in the description or you can check in the lesson notes and I'll leave a link to this from start to finish what ink colors you will need. Obviously, the one you're going to use the most is white. You can use any white for your white base. In our case, we like to use Wilflex products for a white. They've worked great for us. We've mainly switched over to a low cure ink. In this case, it's Wilflex's Bolt White, and it has been working great for us. Something else that has worked for us really well is Wilflex's Amazing Bright White. It just all depends on what you can get with the supply chain these days. Next in the process, we would use a bright red or a national red, just anything that is a really bright red, I got ink on my hand, <laughs> really bright red ink. I designed action steps so that way, for the most part, every single one of these colors are going to be off the shelf aside from maybe just that purple over there. And we'll go over that here in a second. The next print color in the sequence is a mono blue. This is Union Inks Mono Blue, and this is just a off the shelf color. And I found that this color works really well with simulated process printing. Next up, we just have a standard lemon yellow ink. Again, we like to use Will Flex. Sometimes we'll use Union. And we'll also use House Colors from Vortex, which is a GSG brand. So speaking of, this is just a standard bright green ink. Nothing really special about it. Occasionally, we might switch this out for a neon color, but that's not very often. If there's a green that is going into our design, we're just using a standard off the shelf bright green color. So next down the line would be a spot process purple. You can see here, it's epic spot process purple. I generally get this from Ryonet. I'll leave a link for that down in the description as well as the lesson notes up above. Next is our turquoise, and this is just a pretty standard turquoise color. You might want to play around with what turquoise works best for you because a lot of times we might find that some of them are a little too green for our separations, in which case we might switch over to a color like this peacock blue, which works really well in some cases where the turquoise is just a little too green. Next up, we have a gray. Now this is a spot process gray, and it's a cool gray, and generally I'll get this from screenprinting.com. However, we have used standard off-the-shelf grays many times in the past, and they have worked just fine. And here you can see we have an assortment of different grays. You just wanna pick something that's about a 50% gray, and for the most part, you should be a-okay. Our highlight white. We go right back to the same white that we would use for our white base. So just choose your favorite flavor of white ink. For brown, I really like to use Sienna Brown. However, you can play around with your browns and for your flesh tones, the same difference, either a cream color or whatever comes close to the tone that you are pulling from your separation. One of the fun things about simulated process is playing with some of those colors and actually dialing it in in your own shop. Every job is going to be a little different. Last but not least, we have black. So if you're going on a color shirt or a white shirt and you need black, use whatever black you tend to like to use. We, again, like to use Will Flex because I just really enjoy using their products. They hold up well, they're nice and creamy, and they've worked well for us many years. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, just kind of a little bit of a rundown of the ink colors you should be using for simulated process printing. Again, I did design action steps to use a lot of off the shelf colors so that way you don't have to go and do custom Pantone color mixes all the time. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video.